As we continue looking at different elements of machines and how to design those elements, we're going to consider the effect and use of mechanical springs. So first off, why do we use springs in our designs? If you think about it, there's three major reasons, three things that we're doing with springs. The first one, and maybe the most obvious, is that we use springs to oppose displacement. Uh, what we do is we create our springs in such a way so that it produces a force that resists that displacement. And you've learned and have been using this for a while now. The force that's been created by the spring is equal to a spring constant times the amount of displacement the spring has overgone. In addition to opposing displacement, we also use springs to change vibrational characteristics of our machines. Uh, the standard governing equation for how spring, how machines move is mass times acceleration plus a damping times velocity plus uh, the, the springiness of the, of the item, the, the K value. And so by adding a spring, you can change that K value and therefore change the way the system responds. So that's another major reason we have springs um, in machine design. The third reason is we use springs to store energy and the energy storage is equal to 1 half times kx squared. So these are our three major purposes for why we have springs in our designs. The next question is, well, how does a spring actually produce the force? So we start off with this equation, f is equal to kx, of course, but is that really always true? For instance, does k have to be a constant or maybe we have a torsional spring? So our units for k could be newton meters per radian, for instance. Even the rotational spring or torsional spring could be variable across the different types of thetas. So let's illustrate that a couple ways. Uh, this picture shows five different springs with different ways of having uh, rates. So the one that we're most used to, the first one in the picture is a standard constant rate spring. That means the larger the displacement, the larger the force that this spring will, will exhibit until it comes to the point where the spring is closed, or we say where the spring has clashed. And when, the, when the elements of the spring begin touching each other, when the coils begin touching, then it no longer exhibits the same characteristics as the original. Um, so that would be when the spring is, has done all that it can do. Notice the one next to it is a variable pitch. So starting up at the top, we have a, a much further distance than we, between the coils as opposed to down at the bottom. And so it should make sense to you that as you begin compressing, the rates of change will change and K will not be constant here. The same is also true for the barrel, the hourglass, and the conical spring. So let me just show you a couple of examples about why that might be useful. What if you could design a, a, a K that is not a constant, it's a function? And what if we can let that function, for instance, be linear? In other words, my capital K gets bigger the more X is displaced. Then my force will now be proportional to the squared of displacement. This one re responds very quickly to any displacement. Or, kind of on another extreme, uh, what if we uh, uh, design our coils in such a way so that the, the total spring constant is K divided by X? If that's the case, we'd have what we call a constant force. No matter how much you displace the spring, it's always going to generate the same amount of force. A uh, nice, smooth, continuous force generated. So those are two examples of how we might design our, uh, our springs to provide something beyond just F is equal to KX. Very often, we also need to create other types of springs. So the first two images here are shown extension springs. Notice the extension spring um, in the first picture is created by having coils touching each other. And the, it's resisting the pulling apart. That's what an extension spring will do. The second spring is actually a compression spring that's just attached in a strange way so that it can be used as an extension spring. And then the third one is a torsional spring. You can see the effect of, of torsion on the, on the spring. Lots of other different types of springs that we could talk about. Um, all of these, these spring washers have very low uh, profiles and fairly high spring constants for, for what they represent. There's a volute spring and there's beam springs and, and power springs or motor springs. Notice that I, the constant force spring, um, generates a nice steady constant force as it's stretched out. 